what would you recommend? Top two, three books that just come to pop to your head for kind of new docs coming out. So I just read a tweet by Bill Hartman yesterday, I believe it was. And he said for new clinicians, 80% of your reading and research should be very specific to your field. And 20% should be on broad topics. For experienced clinicians, 80% of your reading should be on broad topics and 20% should be in your field to really um, induce creativity. So like after 10 years of doing this, like, I don't know about you guys, but I get bored sometimes. I'm like, yeah. all right, like I need to go read about philosophy or something different just to like keep from getting bored. But new clinicians, like everything is new. Everything's exciting. Uh, everything's a first and they need to get clinical mastery, not creativity, because you need, you need to know what's in the box before you go outside the box. You need to know what's acceptably in your box and how big the box is and what the boundaries are before you go outside the box. So I would say just basic fundamental stuff. Um, get a good anatomy atlas. Like I tell all my patients, cause my netter looks like somebody put it through the washing machine. I tell people, I'm like, if your doctor's anatomy atlas doesn't look like this, find a new doctor. So either netter or grays, um, and there's a lot of good computer-based ones. Um, I, I reference anatomy trains a lot because there's a lot of good diagrams. I actually have some of the anatomy trains posters on my wall in the office. Uh, so I do reference those a lot. Um, I think Travell and Simmons book has really, the trigger point manual is a very good reference text. Uh, and then obviously like human locomotion, I, I've kind of read that and then, like reference it with patients and still reference it for some of the taping strategies for things. But I think that those are the basic um, fundamental things. And then like the, the moderate clinicians that are like, okay, I am starting to see some really weird stuff. You need a good like physiology textbook. Cause you like, if something confuses me, I'm going to like try and boil it down to anatomy uh, biomechanics, physiology, uh, and then the really weird stuff like digging into the neurology behind it. Uh, and so you'll need a good physiology textbook. Uh, and then from there, as you get some mastery, it's like, all right, some of the stuff I'm reading is maybe in, not in my field of specialty, but I can kind of borrow some of the tricks of the trade of of other fields and kind of creative applications of that to your clinical practice. So I think it will evolve as you, you master things, but it needs to be pr pretty tied to your subject matter early on and just um, don't be satisfied with being confused.